Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sean Andrew, back with another review. Um, this time we'll be talking about The Secret Circle, Season 1, Episode 11, Fire Ice. Please feel free to leave your comments down below and your thoughts of the show. We start this episode off with Cassie and Diana talking about the Fire and Ice dance. Diana wants to change her dress and thought it'd be kind of cute if maybe her and Cassie could do a quick little spell. They chant for only two seconds when Cassie's power becomes a bit too much and ends up setting the whole dress on fire. Um, when they get to school, Melissa wants to help out with the dance, says she wants to do something just a bit normal, and thinking about what happened between her and Nick, her being a lot more open, letting Nick in, Nick kind of be partially a jerk, and then kind of caving in, and then he ends up dying. You know, she's been dealing with a lot. Um, and there was the recent thing that happened with Faith trying to get the powers and realizing that guy wasn't fake and her standing up to her. She's just trying to get some normalcy back into her life. Makes a lot of sense. Besides that, the girls then also realize that, you know, we all don't have a date. We should all go together, which is something girls have a tendency of doing a lot more than guys. Um, and then Cassie actually has kind of this quick moment where she feels like she saw Jack. She starts to follow the guy and then realizes it's not him. Um, later on at her locker, Adam shows up and offers to take her to City Records to find out more about her dad. Diana sees them walking off and she has that look in her face as if, you know, she's trying here. She is really trying her best to, you know, establish the fact that, okay, yes, me and Adam are broken up. And yes, me and Cassie are now friends, you know, but it's still kind of hard for her since... Adam was very important to her. I mean, then plus knowing about the, the, the magic and being a witch is a very good, um, a good way of deepening that connection since you can't really talk to that <laughs> with everyone. Um, so back at the, the city office records, we learned that there is some property underneath her father's name, but there's also no recollection about the fire. So we can definitely tell there was a cover up going on. Um, the property that the father owns is the secret house they've been doing magic in all along. So they go back to the house, and in the basement, Adam tries to make his move on her. She shuts him down very quickly, talking about how, you know, Diana's her friend, and, you know, through everything that they've been through, you know, this just really isn't the best of time, blah, blah, blah. He kind of buys that, he leaves, and then before she does, Cassie then discovers a symbol carved into the ceiling. Um, she goes back, she tells the girls, Diana and Melissa, um, she also shows them the symbol that's in her book of shadows, which uh, one of the girls found pretty interesting since that was more based of her father's side and not actually her side. Um, but they don't know what else it could have been about. Um, they didn't learn that the page right before that symbol has been ripped out. They're trying to figure out who did it, and all of a sudden, Faye's name pop up. They look over at Melissa, and she just has that guilty look in her face, like, what? I didn't I didn't take the page. Why, why are you looking at me? I thought that was very much of Melissa being a flunky to an extent, as much as she's trying to step away from dealing with Faye. So let's go over to Faye. She actually runs into that boy from the website who's outside the school, and he immediately notices um, the other people she seems to hang around. Um, and he narrows down that these must be the other people in your circle. And the reason you lost your powers is because you binded the circle. This actually starts to intrigue Faith. He knows more and more about magic as he claimed that he does. Back at his garage, they talk about the spell and how it what it actually does is try to extract dark magic. And now seeing that it's mostly dealing with just Cassie, they decide to form a plan of their own. But just then, Cassie calls and chews out Faye about the missing page, and the slightest concern for Cassie that Faye may have had went right out the window. They sneak into her house, they take one of her personal possessions, um, and now at the school dance, her and the boy are starting to perform the spell in a classroom nearby. When all is done, all of the members of the circle start to feel a little bit dizzy and lightheaded. Um, they feel like it's just about they're about to faint. Um, Faye actually walks in with a lot of confidence with the guy, and she sets a couple of the displays on fire. It's one of those things where it kind of has like the fan with a couple of um, uh, like fabrics cut out, and it's a, a red light that kind of makes it like it's on fire. She actually sets them on fire for real. And everybody else just think, oh, this must be part of the dance. 
We'll just keep going like nothing happened. Cassie sees her and Cassie confronts her about what's going on. You know, you've done something because now um, Diana falls. Melissa just got taken. Uh, she just went towards the bathroom. Diana falls. And now um, Adam is starting to get like this type of weird uh, headache. And she's like, you know, something is definitely going on because you still seem fine when all this is said and done. Faye starts to notice, yeah, people around her are starting to get hurt. This isn't what she signed on for. So she even jacks the boy up against the locker. It was like, you know, hey, this is my circle you're messing with. I need to know how to cut the connection. Um, he tells her how to do so. But I want to pause there for a second because it's one of the only times you really see Faye actually accepting that, you know, she's part of the circle. You know, because she's such an individual, I think that's a really big step for her as a character, but also shows where she can potentially go from a storyline standpoint, that she's just kind of the bad girl that really plays good. But when you see more about her mother, then you kind of understand that as well. So back to the story. Um, there was a centerpiece that had the same type of uh, fan and fake flame set up. That one erupts into a huge actual flame. Um, everything starts to seem like it's catching on fire. A lot of the displays, these large crystal things start falling from the ground and everybody runs out. They realize, where's Melissa? So Cassie runs back and again, she supposedly lost her power, but she's focusing on this door that has nothing but flames all around it and is able to make the door, um, the flames from the door actually disappear. But it's a little bit too late as she runs to find Melissa on the floor, passed out from the dizziness, that Cassie also passes out as well because of the smoke. So when that happens, out of the blue, Cassie and uh, Melissa wake up outside on the lawn. And the last thing Cassie recalls is seeing a pair of black boots um, in front of her before she passed out. Now, the rest of the group is talking and arguing with Faye about everything that happened. And they're definitely entitled to do so. I mean, you know, people could have got seriously hurt. Diana kept bringing up about the school catching on fire. You could have uh, killed somebody within the circle. Um, but unfortunately, I have to actually side with Faye on this with her reply because she talks about all the things that have happened when Cassie first got here and how everyone treats her like little Miss Innocent. And she points out some super good things. She talks about how when Cassie showed up, uh, she releases a demon that ends up killing Nick. She points out that she brings Jack into the circle without them wanting him to know. And then we couldn't have found out that he's a witch hunter. And then he just she just did something recently where she almost killed Adam. You know, and she's like, then you guys play her off as little Miss Innocent. And yet you light me up at the stake. Again, with those points, I got to side more with Faye because since Cassie came here, there's been nothing but problems, even though. Even though Faye did try to burn her alive in, in the truck in the first episode, but she probably wasn't going to let that actually happen. Though. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out again. Um, we then learn that uh, through this episode about Diana and Melissa, they never really talk too much about them because a lot of times they just make it feel as if, you know, because our family is part of the circle or a circle or knowing of magic, that we also became friends. But when you learn that Diana and Melissa were pretty cool friends by themselves, that they used to play dress up and do each other's makeup and really just had a ball as kids, that it wasn't until Adam came along and their relationship started that Melissa kind of got pushed off to the side. And now, with the whole situation after the dance, Diana takes Melissa home, and they have even more common than they thought. Melissa started to show some really major concern for Faye, thinking that she's taking the wrong path. And Diana started to show a lot of concern for Cassie, because they feel that her powers are getting too strong, and she may end up becoming a problem. Um, both of them, very good points. You definitely see that person who's doing drugs, and you want to try to step in. And you see the other person who's maybe doing steroids. You want to try to tell them, calm down a bit. Some people can't control it. Either way, I agree with both of them that there are problems on both hands that need to get adjusted. And I just wonder how they're now going to come together now, kind of rekindling their friendship to help handle this. In closing, we go back to Cassie and Adam, who are in the basement of the house. Cassie is reconsidering uh, the correct way of removing the dark magic without hurting her or anyone else. Before they get to that point, Adam makes in another move, starts to kiss her, and Cassie seems more than happy to actually kiss back. But just then, those black boots that Cassie saw comes walking down the stairs, and lo and behold, it's Jack. 
This show has so many twists and turns, and it's done very tastefully. The action's always there. The comedy is there when it happens. Um, it, it's really intriguing me, you know. Um, I don't know how many episodes so far they're going to have, um, but I hope it's a full-fledged, you know, 20-something episodes. That would be really great. Um, I still have no idea where they're going with the story, though, at all. I know there's something going on with the parents, um, some with the circle, something that happened with the fire. Um, something more about the grandmother and the elders, I believe they're called. And But I still don't know where a storyline actually is with this. So hopefully they can get into something, you know, because if you're thinking about 24, there's a terrorist attack. Bam. And then you know each time they're trying to go to terror. This is about a bunch of kids who have magical powers and they're trying to really figure it out. But to me, that's not really a storyline per se. But for what it's worth, I like the characters. I like where they're going. I definitely can't wait to see see next week's episode. So um, that has been my review of The Secret Circle, Season 1, Episode 11, Fire and Ice. Uh, my name is Sean Andrew, for the TV show review. Please feel free to leave comments down below what you think is going to happen next. See ya.